So my first teacher was actually my mom. She's also a violinist. She's uh, played in the Seattle Symphony for many years. And she uh, got me started on the violin. It was totally my idea. She really didn't want to push it, but I begged her to take lessons. And she took on the challenge of teaching her daughter. My mom is, she is a lifelong learner of the violin. She's always trying to peel back the layers of things that can be better. She's really inspired me to be a lifelong learner of the instrument and of music, and has empowered me to challenge myself and, and figure things out and work on them without fear of failure and without feeling self-conscious and just a kind of open curiosity. So working on this piece by Hilborg, the piece is really difficult. Our individual parts are are hard and so when you're trying to learn a piece like that you know you can't get anywhere just practicing the the stuff that you can play no problem you have to really dive into the things that you struggle with you have to really kind of be able to peel back the layers on that if you can come at it in a open and curious way it's a really enriching experience or Living in a time right now where there has never been more to learn. The best teachers that we can have are the ones that really encourage us to lean into the learning process and encourage us to be open and vulnerable to learning new things and being able to approach things that are difficult and sometimes frustrating or scary will make for a richer life.
So I've been working with the Oregon Symphony with the Gospel Christmas Project probably for the last 14 years as a soloist. It's really one of the highlights of my year. One of the connections that I have is um, I work with this organization called Self Enhancement Incorporated. Um, I remember that while I was doing Gospel Christmas, I actually got to bring a group of those students to one of the uh, dress rehearsals um, and expose them to Gospel Christmas for the first time. First time them getting to hear the symphony. And it was really magical. Self Enhancement Incorporated serves underprivileged and underserved young people and their families. They actually really rescued my family. Um, when I was younger, in high school, my mom had to work 12-hour shifts. I had to really raise my brother and sister. By the time I got to high school, SEI came into their lives and actually became kind of that after-school program, which was great for me because it freed me up to really be able to participate in school and not have the responsibilities of being a parent, so to speak, even though I was just a kid. Later on in life, it was SEI program that really helped my family once again. I was newly married, had a one-year-old baby when I became homeless and was living um, in a hotel. SEI helped find us housing and really helped us get on our feet. And after that, ended up offering me a job and now I get to give back to them in the same way that SEI helped me. The song that I picked is Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come. Um, I'm very passionate about that song because I feel like in these times and what's going on in our country, in our current climate, change is needed. SEI is kind of making that change, so I really felt like this song, combined with the work that I do, really kind of wraps it all together um, in making that change happen in our community. Just like the river I've been running ever since It's been a long, long time coming But I know that change gonna come Oh yes it will It's been too hard living But I'm afraid to up there beyond the sky you spent a long long time coming but I know change gonna come oh yes it will said I go to the movies and I go They keep telling me, don't you hang around. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Then I go. Say, brother, help me, please. But he winds up knocking me back down, back down to my knees. Oh, there were times when I felt I would lie.
I do love the uh, the slow unfolding of a musical idea. It's like watching a cookie bake. Right. The cookie is more satisfying if you watched it bake. <laughs> But if it just appears to you as a fully formed cookie, you had no idea what went into the process of making it. So Andrew Norman, one of the most talented, interesting um, stars of the American classical music scene. Um, and oh. we're thrilled to have you. Let's bake cookies, because dang it, we need them right now. Yes. Yes. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cream the butter and sugar together. A cup of butter, that's sobering, isn't it? We're gonna put a cup of brown sugar. This brown sugar just reminds me of my youth because I used to put it on Cheerios when I was young. So, now we're at the point where we mix it. Oh my gosh, all of my butter just got stuck in my bed. Ah. <laughs> If you're part of the process of watching something take shape, I think you're more invested in it than if you just saw the final product. So I think I think a lot of my pieces are like, you watch the thing being formed and the piece has to find itself. That to me, that process of becoming is very powerful. Is there any aspect of that type of compositional motion that, that owes a little bit to like road trip timelines and like seeing landscapes change over time? Or is that just me? Oh, no. I think the metaphor is totally there. And I think that I do love that idea of a piece of music. It's like it is, a, it can be very much like a slow moving landscape. And, you know, we're all stationary and the music is moving, which is very different than when in a car we are moving and the landscape is stationary. But it's a very similar idea of like watching the pace of things change. been at USC to position there. I have been there for, I think it's six years, but I just left. Okay, and where are you going? I am going to Juilliard. So, teaching composition seems like an incredibly difficult thing. It is the most interesting and difficult thing, I think. In composition, you know, every single student is different, which is true, you know, in any discipline, but, Composition has been taught in so many different ways. And a lot of that goes to what is the idea of technique as a composer? Does the technique lead to the voice? Yeah. Or should the voice determine what technique is used? Whenever I'm teaching any sort of idea of technique, I'm very wary because I want the students to be able to develop a kind of critical apparatus of what is the, the history of this technique? What does it mean kind of aesthetically? Where is it pushing us? What is it sort of closing our mind to if it's opening our mind to something else? I do find that very, very tricky. And I'll give you one example. It's just, uh, we could talk about counterpoint for a second. Counterpoint, of course, is this like centuries and centuries old discipline and idea of how to stick one voice of music against another voice of music. It's incredibly useful, but you study all different kinds of counterpoint, 18th century counterpoint, 16th century counterpoint, 20th century counterpoint. Suddenly you get in your head without anyone ever telling you that all good music is constant punk. And that's, that's actually not true. But if you spent your whole life mastering counterpoint and no one's ever told you to think critically about how you're using it or why, you might be just a little bit narrower, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Totally. So for me, it's like, when I'm teaching a composition student, it's more like we're exploring the creative process together. And I'm trying to figure out how this individual person is creative and how I can help sort of foster their individual sense of creativity, what works for them, what doesn't, rather than trying to get them to meet a set standard of these are the things that you should know how to do. We're gonna preheat our ovens to 375. Oh, mine, mine is there. Oh man, you are crushing it. Well, while we're waiting for mine, do you wanna just tell me quickly about the piece that we're gonna to hear today on this episode of Essential Sounds? Yeah, so for Ashley is a solo cello piece. It was inspired by the Prelude to the Fifth Suite by, by Bach. One of the things I was really interested in is the way that Bach takes a very simple kind of arpeggio structure in that movement and then repeats it over and over and over again 
and then morphs it over time so that the harmonies gradually change but the shape of each measure stays the same. And it reminded me very much of minimalism. My piece it does a very similar thing. It takes one kind of arpeggio shape on the cello and then I think for me it was like seeing where I could get by very gradually shifting the different parameters of music, the notes, the pitches, the rhythms, the timbre, stuff like that to kind of create that sense of morphing. You know, I'm a big MC Escher fan too, and I think there was that sense of like watching something gradually shift that I was really trying to explore. I think it might be cookie time. Okay, you cookies. Okay, you cookies. Oh, there's there. There are some cookies in our brown. All right. Yeah, here's my cookie. Let me see it. It is definitely warm. How How is it? Did you try Oh, it? how is the cookie? Yeah. Well, let me... It's a little warm. Mmm. Oh, boy. Like, I've made this, like, ice cream sandwich here. I don't know if you can see Oh, my it. gosh. Look at that. That looks amazing. This is just, like, me not caring about my health at all. More caring about my mental health than my physical health, maybe. Mmm. Priorities. Look at, look at that big glass of milk. That's awesome. No. You know how to party. <laughs>
Thank you again so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Essential Sounds by the Oregon Symphony. Um, I'm very excited that the Oregon Symphony has partnered um, with Self Enhancement Incorporated, which is the organization I talked about earlier. In 2019 alone, we served over 16,000 students and their families. There's a link at the bottom of your screen, so if you want to participate, if you want to donate, learn more about the organization, please click on that link and find out more information about that organization. And with that said, I want you now to all enjoy this last beautiful performance of a sonata by Bach. Thank you. 